Hey man, Shane here. Rest times are often brushed aside. You'll hear that they matter, sure, but that they're one of the lesser factors, that they'll only have a negligible impact on your muscle growth. That's not necessarily true. If we look at the research, using proper rest times can double your muscle growth. Or if you do it the wrong way around, it can cut your muscle growth in half. Moreover, it's not quite as simple as shorter, longer rest periods being better for building muscle. Thankfully, there's more than one way to unskinny a cat. Let's dive into it. Back in the golden age of bodybuilding, everyone was all about short rest times. They'd lift hard, rest quickly, and then leap back into the next set. Their heart rate would stay elevated all through their workouts, they'd get killer pumps, and they'd pack in a ton of sets and exercises. It was all about density. Powerlifters would often train more sparsely. They would spend about the same amount of time in the gym, but more of that time would be spent resting, less time would be spent doing all these different exercises. The idea was to recover fully between each set, allowing them to give each lift their very best effort. Then, in 2016, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, as he so often does, published a paper that ravaged the landscape. Schoenfeld had the first group rest for one minute between sets, which was fairly typical for bodybuilders back then. And he had the second group rest for three minutes between sets, more similar to how a powerlifter might rest after going up a flight of stairs. Each group did three sets of each exercise. The group using short rest times built muscle just fine, but the group using longer rest times wound up gaining twice as much muscle, a huge increase. So that means longer rest times are better for building muscle, right? Well, no, that's not quite what it means, but a lot of people did come to that conclusion and it's easy to see why. The study struck the lifting community like a war hammer. It didn't kill the dogma outright, bodybuilders aren't so easily dissuaded, but it was a debilitating blow and short rest times have never made a full recovery. Nowadays, the standard bulking advice is to rest more like a power lifter, to rest until you feel fully recovered, or at least mostly recovered. Maybe that means resting two minutes, three minutes, maybe even five minutes, and that's too bad because the bodybuilders were onto something. A few years later, Longo and colleagues published a follow-up study. Just like in the first study, the participants did three sets with one minute of rest, and they compared that against three sets with three minutes of rest. And just like in that first study, the participants who used longer rest times gained twice as much muscle. Case closed, right? But bodybuilders don't train like that. They're in the gym for as long as the powerlifters, doing extra exercises, training obscure body parts and blasting away at drop sets. Even during their rest times, bodybuilders aren't lazy spotters. They're in there doing work. So, Longo also tested what would happen if the group using shorter rest times used some of their extra time to add in an extra set or two. And in that case, they got the same amount of muscle growth as the group using longer rest times, and they were still able to finish their workouts in less time. So using shorter rest times will get you out of the gym slightly faster, but it doesn't really matter. The real trick is to line up your rest times with your style of training. You can't rush through a powerlifting workout because you won't be able to get enough heavy reps in. And you can't sleep through a bodybuilding workout because you'll be in the gym for four hours and you'll fall behind on your calories. People usually use shorter rest times to work on their conditioning, to get better at recovering between sets. You can also use it to include extra exercises, which is great for building a more balanced physique. Using longer rest periods seems to be better for gaining maximal strength, especially when you're trying to apply that strength to a sport like powerlifting. That way you can give each set your best effort, really focusing on recruiting all of your motor units and exploding the weight up. Or, if you want the best of both worlds, you could use a mix of both approaches. Maybe you train your big lifts with longer rest times and then you blast through your accessory lifts. Or you could spend a few months using short rest times, working on your conditioning, and then spend a few months using longer rest times, focusing on increasing your maximal strength. That's what we try to do in our programs. We use a mix of both, sometimes in the same workout, sometimes between different phases. The other thing to keep in mind is that different people have different degrees of strength and fitness. Skinny beginners are often able to get away with relatively short rest times. We aren't lifting that much weight and we aren't working that much overall muscle mass. Not yet, anyway. So it doesn't take that long to recover between sets. That's even more true in doing smaller isolation lifts. Because you're lifting less weight and working less muscle mass, you can often get away with using shorter rest times. If you want to recover completely between sets, a good rule of thumb is to rest for around 3-5 to five minutes after your bigger lifts, like squats and deadlifts. And then for your smaller lifts, you can rest for more like 1-3 to three minutes. If you're skinny, weak, or fit, then you can err on the shorter side of those rest times. If you're bigger, stronger, or out of shape, then you can err on the longer side. A good trick is to pay attention to your breathing. If your breathing has come back down, then you're probably ready for your next set. Or you could use shorter rest times on purpose, intentionally beginning your next set before you've fully recovered. If you do that, just remember to add in around 50% more sets. That way you're still stimulating the same amount of muscle growth. However long you rest, you still need to focus on progressive overload. 
Every workout, you should be fighting to add a little bit of weight or to eke out an extra rep. You won't be able to make progress on every lift, every workout, but you do need to make sure you're getting stronger from week to week, month to month, and year to year. All right, that's it for now. If you have any comments, questions, or criticisms, drop them down below. I hope to see you in the next one.